wonton noodle soup. It's one of those quintessential Asian dishes that I just love. Got those chewy egg noodles and those lovely savory wontons. Ah, oh, so good. And I'm gonna show you how you can make a simple version of this at home. An awesome wonton noodle soup starts with an awesome noodle soup broth. So we're gonna start off by making a little paste because we're gonna jazz up uh, a standard sort of store-bought uh, stock by making a little flavor base. So we've got some garlic and some ginger, a few peppercorns, and we just wanna bruise those aromatics so when they hit the frying pan, they release all of their beautiful aromas and flavors. Mm, smells good already. Okay, so we're just looking for, you know, just a rough sort of bruising on those ingredients. It doesn't have to be a fine paste. All right, now let's get our pot heating up. Start with a little bit of oil. And now for the sizzle. As soon as those aromatics hit the pan, it's such a comforting smell. Yum. This is a great trick for making any store-bought stock at home taste really beautiful. Because if you're anything like me, you've got to make do with what's in the cupboard. And sometimes store-bought stock is all you've got. That smells really good. So even though I'm using a chicken stock already, I'm going to add some extra chicken pieces because that's going to boost the flavor in the stock. It's also going to give us some chicken meat for our finished dish. When you're cooking at home, you want to use any opportunity to add lots more flavor to any dish. Using these aromatics in the chicken is one way to do that. You want that chicken to get a little bit of color. Just be careful that garlic doesn't burn though because burnt garlic will add a bit of taste. Okay, now for the chicken stock. And then you want a couple of tablespoons of soy sauce. And then my other secret tip for boosting that stock flavor is to always add some star anise whenever you're making an Asian broth. It's gonna give it a really subtle spiced kind of flavor. Yum. And then a little pinch of salt. And you just let that bubble away for about 30 minutes and by then you're gonna have a beautiful tasty soup broth. And now for the wontons. I'm using chicken mince and a few prawns. And I just wanna roughly chop those prawns. I love to get that sort of bouncy pop of little pieces of prawn as I'm biting into that wonton. Okay, to that I'm gonna add some finely chopped spring onion, some sesame oil, some cornstarch. Now that's gonna help with getting the right texture and a little bit of water. Now that's gonna keep our wonton mixture nice and juicy and a good pinch of salt. Give that a good mix and you wanna keep mixing all those proteins until it becomes quite sticky you'll see the texture change as you mix everything through. That looks good. Now what I love about wontons is they're one of the easiest dumplings to make. So take yourself a wonton wrapper. You can find those in the fridge section at your Asian grocer or in some major grocery stores as well. And you just want a little bit of water just on the edges and take yourself a little bit of your filling you don't want to overfill them because they will burst. And then just sort of fold and mush the sides together so that you're enclosing the filling. It doesn't matter too much about the shape with these. The most important part is that you're enclosing the filling and pushing out any air bubbles. Now you want at least four wontons per serve. And I find that this mixture makes a lot of wontons, more than you need, but I've never found that to be a problem. Just pop them into your freezer on a tray, and then once they're frozen, put them into a Ziploc bag and you can keep them for a couple of months. And whenever that dumpling craving hits, you've got them ready to go. Now your wontons just need to be cooked in plenty of boiling water, and I like to cook them separately to the broth because otherwise you're gonna get that starchy flour from the outside of your wonton wrapper going into your broth, which isn't as nice. Now drain them off and it's time to eat. Now just remove those chicken pieces and slice those up to serve in your soup and then strain your broth. 